Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam said The sanctuary of Allah is Mecca The sanctuary of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him is Medina The sanctuary of Amir al-Mu'minin Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam is Najaf The sanctuary of Sayyid al-Shuhada Imam Hussein alayhi salam is Karbala and the sanctuary of us the Ahlul Bayt is Qum and so here I am back in Qum the home of more than 400 Imam Zadi for the 28th documentary of the lost legends in the course of my research on the children of Imam Muhammad Taqi al Jawad alayhi salam I did a very interesting analysis Out of the 12 infallible imams who are the successors and progeny of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the average age from the 1st to the 8th that is from Imam Ali alayhi salam to Imam Ali Raza alayhi salam is 56 years that figure falls substantially and rather alarmingly to 29 years almost half when you see the average age of the next 3 imams from Imam Muhammad Taqi al Jawad alayhi salam to Imam Hasan al Askari alayhi salam The age of the 12th Imam is not calculated because he is still alive. While it is a known fact that all the Imams were assassinated after a point the Abbasid dynasty that was then in power seemed in some sort of hurry to kill them off. In my personal opinion their actions were an effort to reach, capture and surely kill the 12th Imam, Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam the awaited, who according to various narrations will bring down the unjust empires of his time. Keep these statistics in mind for a better understanding of the timeline discussed in this documentary. Today we talk about a man who along with his family played a central role in the nurturing and guidance of Qum as a city towards a path of religion, knowledge and spirituality in those crucial early days. I say crucial because he arrived in Qum just 4 years prior to the commencement of Ghaibat al-Sughra. or the minor occultation of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam and because the two previous imams spent major portions of their life under house arrest cut off from the masses far away in Samarra Iraq it was a time of questions and confusion as very soon the shias would be physically disconnected from the imam for a period that would extend into the coming centuries if you understand the delicacy of the situation I am talking about the Adam of the Rezvis or to put in a more straightforward term the father of the Rezvi Sayyids Imam Zade Musa Mubarraka son of Imam Muhammad Taqi al Jawad alayhi salam resting with his extended family in the Chehel Akhtaran shrine of Qum Mubarraka is a term derived from Burqa Imam Zade Musa bin Muhammad so handsome was he never left his home without first covering his face with a veil Hence the title Mubarraka meaning veiled or covered like Imam Hasan alayhi salam he was also known as Yusuf of the Ahlul Bayt He was born in Syria a village near Medina on the 10th of Rajab 217 Hijri and shares a birthday with his father allow me to introduce you to his noble parents and siblings his father imam muhammad taqi al jawad alayhi salam the ninth imam rests in the kazmia shrine of baghdad in iraq alongside his great grandfather imam musa al kazim alayhi salam the seventh imam his mother bibi samana al maghribia salam alayha is buried under the golden dome of the samarra shrine also in iraq alongside his elder brother Imam Ali Naqi Al Hadi alayhi salam and his sister Bibi Hakima Khatun salam alayha his other sister Bibi Zainab Khatun salam alayha the architect of the first dome of the shrine of Qum is buried alongside Bibi Fatima Masume salam alayha two of his sisters Bibi Khadija salam alayha and Bibi Umm Muhammad salam alayha a buried in the same shrine as his while his youngest sister bibi fatima salam alayha popular as bibi zubaida khatun is buried in the scenic hills of naraq barely 2 hours from qum imam zade musa mubarraka is a grandson of imam ali raza alayhi salam 
the eighth Imam, which may make you wonder why the majority of his descendants are known as Razavis and not Taqwis. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, because of Imam Raza al-Salam's popularity amongst the masses and his recognition that spanned three continents. Secondly, due to the people of Iran themselves, out of the 12 Imams, it is Imam Raza al-Salam who is buried in Iran. So when his grandson migrated to their country, he was naturally a Razavi to them. Indeed, all the Imams after Imam Raza al-Salam have been referred to in various narrations as Ibn al-Raza or the son of Imam Raza al-Salam. When Imam al-Jawad al-Salam was forcibly summoned to Baghdad by Mutasim Abbasi, he hugged both his sons and asked them what gift they would like from Iraq. Imam al-Hadi al-Salam said that he would like to have a sword that burns like fire, while Imam Zadi Musa Mubaraka said that he would like to have a horse. Imam al-Jawad al-Salam smiled and said, Al-Hadi is similar to me, while Musa is similar to his mother. He was just three and his brother Imam Ali Naqi al-Hadi al-Salam just six when his father was poisoned and killed in Baghdad. Those early years were spent in extreme hardship and poverty. He grew dedicated to his elder brother with whom he formed an intimate bond, always addressing him with the statement, May my life be sacrificed for you. Under his guidance, he rose in knowledge and stature. When Mutawakkil of the Abbasid dynasty became the Caliph of the Muslim state, he summoned Imam Ali al-Hadi al-Salam to Samarra in Iraq and placed him under house arrest. Little is documented about Imam Zadeh Musa's activities in those days, but his presence in Samarra is known through the fact that he sat beside his brother in the debate with Yahya ibn Aksam. He was the right hand of his brother in those difficult and turbulent times. A direct link between the Imam and the Shias and therefore a thorn in the side of Mutawakkil who wanted to isolate Imam al-Hadi al-Salam from the masses. Mutawakkil is a vicious caliph who tried to destroy the grave of Imam Hussain al-Salam 42 times. It is only the will of Allah that the mighty dome of the chief of martyrs still stands. He charged Yaqub Yasir, the butler who served him wine, to malign the character of the Imam Zadeh and portray him as untrustworthy and impious among the people. Truth, however, prevailed and the lie failed to achieve its purpose. The fact that the Caliph resorted to such measures throws light on the crucial role played by Imam Zadeh Musa in keeping alive the communication between the Imam and his Shias when his brother was unjustly incarcerated in Samarra. In 254 Hijri, Imam al-Hadi al-Salam was poisoned by the then Caliph al-Mutaz. This was the turning point in the life of Imam Zade Musa Mubarraqa. In 255 Hijri, he moved to Kufa, but due to constant threat to life from the Abbasids, he finally migrated to Iran in 256 Hijri, undoubtedly after consultation with his nephew, the 11th Imam, Imam Hassan al-Askari al-Salam. He was invited by scholars like Muhammad bin Yahya, Ahmad bin Isa al-Ashari and Ahmad bin Ishaq al-Qummi, old companions of his father who had settled in Qum. Given the history of persecutions and mass murders of the Sadat by the Abbasids, the Arabs living in Qum initially objected to his presence. They feared that the Caliph would not only send his soldiers and mercenaries to kill the great Sayyid, but in the bargain, massacre and ransack the entire city for harboring him. Forced by circumstances, Imam Zade Musa Mubaraka moved to Kashan. Historically, Kashan had a large concentration of Shias. Here, the Imam Zade received a grand welcome. The ruler of the city, Ahmad bin Abdul Aziz, was honored to host the grandson of Imam Raza al-Salam. He gave him a house and set a thousand gold shekels and a saddled horse as a handsome annual allowance. 
the people of Qum soon realized their mistake. Under the leadership of Abu Sadim Hassan al-Ashari, they arrived in Kashan in large numbers to apologize to Imam Zadim Musa and invite him back to Qum. He accepted the apology and returned to Qum, where he was gifted a big house and property to live for as long as he pleased. After settling down in Qum, with his financial circumstances having changed for the better, Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarakah invited his sisters to join him. Three of them made it to the holy city, namely Bibi Zainab Alaiha, Bibi Khadija Alaiha, and Bibi Umm Muhammad Alaiha. At the time, the entire shrine of Bibi Fatima Masume Alaiha, was all but a room constructed with straw mats under a ceiling made from sticks. Imam Zadeh Musa Mubaraka along with his sister Bibi Zainab Khatun took on the task of constructing the first dome and courtyard of the shrine in 260 Hijri. That this coincides exactly with the commencement of the minor occultation of Imam al-Mahdi al-Salam speaks volumes of their vision. They had initiated the building of a shrine that would act as a pivotal center for the Shias especially those of Iran, for centuries to follow during an extended period when their living Imam would be hidden from their eyes. Some years later, his daughter, also named Bibi Zainab, installed the first Zari over the grave of Bibi Fatima Masume. Peace be upon them. In the latter part of his life, towards the end of the third Islamic century, he also built the first dome of Imam Raza Salam in Mashhad. Priceless contributions that have served the country and the community in terms of religion, culture, heritage, architecture, education and finance. The influence of this first family of the Rezuvis on the city of Qum can be understood by simply studying the names of the holy ladies buried alongside Bibi Fatima Masume Alaiha. They are, according to narrations, Bibi Zainab Khatun, sister of Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarakah, Bibi Umm Muhammad and Bibi Memuna, nieces of Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarakah, Bibi Umm Ishaq, granddaughter of Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarakah, Bibi Umm Habib and Bibi Umm Ahmad, great granddaughters of Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarakah, Bibi Umm Qasim and Bibi Bariha, descendants of Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarakah. Peace be upon them. He had two sons, Muhammad and Ahmad. He also had four daughters, Bibi Zainab, Bibi Umm Muhammad, Bibi Memune, and Bibi Burere. Peace be upon them. Imam Zadeh Muhammad did not have children and the lineage of Imam Zadeh Musa continued through the progeny of Imam Zadeh Ahmad and his son Imam Zadeh Muhammad Araj. They are known as Rizvi, Razavi, Radavi, Taqwi, Jawadi and Burqai Sadat. Truly, Qum is the home of the Rizvi Sayyids, wherein lie the roots of the tree whose branches have reached the east and the west of the earth. Indeed, more than 1500 jurists and scholars and thousands of poets were born into his progeny. Imam Zadeh Musa Mubaraka remained a man of robust social standing and political influence in Qum for as long as he lived and indeed continues to be so. For his shrine is always brimming with pilgrims from several countries, but especially from India and Pakistan. There were three virtues that made him the beloved of the populace. That he was the direct son of an infallible Imam. That he had a strikingly beautiful face like Prophet Yusuf, Imam Hassan and Hazrat Abbas, peace be upon them, that people would literally stop to stare at. And that he was a noble source of Kausari Fatimi who recited the interpretations of the Quran and traditions 
directly from the Imams as he quoted from the Divine. One of the traditions narrated by him that he heard from his father who quoted the Holy Prophet peace be upon him who said that shaving the beard clean is a form of mutilation of the face. The extended family of Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarraka are buried within a separate chamber of the same shrine. They are the first family of the Rezavi Sadat and it is their collective presence that gives the shrine its name. Chehel Akhtaran or the 40 stars. Before I end, here is an important statistic for those who wish to study the lives of the Imam Zadeh. Ghaibat al sughra or the minor occultation of Imam al-Mahdi salam commenced in 260 Hijri and Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarraka remained alive till 296. He carried the mantle of guidance for 36 crucial years, expertly answering questions and efficiently handling queries with the knowledge that he had inherited from his forefathers. Therefore, sit back and reflect on the importance of the role of this great Sayyid. The fact that all the children of Imam al-Hadi died young and that Imam Hassan al-Askari had just one son who is the living Imam himself makes Imam Zadeh Musa Mubarraka the last of the direct children of the great Imams and I am privileged to be his descendant through both parents. Salams to all.